Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech Bits, otherwise known as your friendly neighborhood basement dweller. Don't worry, ma'am, I am from the internet. I love technology, especially hardware. Chat GTP got absolutely wrecked by Atari's 2600 in beginner's chess match. Open AI's newest model bamboozled by 1970s logic. That's right. This thing ran on a 1.19 megahertz in an almost 50 year old system. That really hits home. Almost 50 years, my goodness. In quite an unexpected turn of events, it's claimed by OpenAI's ChatGTP got absolutely wrecked in the beginner's level game while playing Atari chess. Here we have Mr. R Roberto Jr. Caruso, and he's posted a picture, I really wish he made a video, saying that Atari 2600 scores stunning victory over chat GTP. So not only do I absolutely believe this happened, but I want to point something out to you guys. Are you familiar with this cartoon? <laughs> so you get different people at different levels who have different abilities with different things. That's why even in video games, you'll have your healer, you'll have your DPS, you'll have your tank, and some people are better at doing different things. Your healer's not going to be pulling. Jeez, if you got a heal healer that's pulling aggro, you got problems. Anyways, buddy here is like, for a fair selection, everyone has to take the same exam. Climb that tree. Now you got the dog, you got the fish, you got the monkey, you got the elephant. Now that monkey could pull that tree down, or parts of it at least. That monkey will get up there, hey, no problem, absolutely no problem. And that's what's going on here. Basically, Chess GTP is not made for playing chess. I see a lot of this stuff going on. Objectivity seems to go right out the window. Now, here we see Elon saying, well, it's true that Kasporvok, well, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that, is almost as good at playing chess as my iPhone. He's otherwise an idiot. Okay, bring your iPhone out, buddy. Put it on the table. Don't download any apps on it and have it play him. See how that goes. Now, also, buddy, this, this guy has the ability to pick up chess pieces and move them across the board. So, your phone has the ability to do all of this stuff. Is it programmed to? Do you need to go out and get that program? That program has to be programmed by somebody. So while we could find chess pieces that uh, or, or apps that can beat different people, just because you have a phone that's so powerful doesn't mean that it has the programming available to beat him. And I'm wondering where his math comes from. Now, I have some certain respects for Elon, but in other ways, I don't. I don't like people who get their balls out. They just put their junk out there and put everything face forward because it's kind of like Reddit. If Reddit, if someone posts something and there's a question to it or you have a question, you know damn well that the first two or three comments are going to be something acidine, something funny, someone trying to be funny, someone trying to be witty, but very rarely do you actually get the freaking answer. I really think that Elon should change. His stance from computers is so much better at humans at chess, it's absurd to computers have the potential to be so much better than humans that it's absurd. Now here's the real kicker. Did anyone ask GTP, chat GTP, why it lost? Chat GTP doesn't play chess games the way a chess engine does. The Atari game is optimized for playing, not for talking. My strengths depend on how I'm used. It's a generalist AI, but it doesn't play chess. I absolutely got to say, this story seems more like a story just to make a story and to put something out there. Chess computer games were popular from the early days of console to home computing, with computing and chess enthusiasts going to great lengths of grade ability chess engine 
versus the Grand Masters. You guys remember IBM's Deep Blue supercomputer made history when in 1997 it defeated Gary someone or other, whose name I can't pronounce, I'm very sorry, the, re the reigning world chess champion at the time. Instrumental to its victory, Deep Blue leveraged brute force techniques and evaluated 200 million possible chess moves per second. Okay, so how much... I'm, sh I'm sure that if you went to ChatGTP with a full paid version and you asked it to beat this game, it absolutely would. But topically, the free version of ChatGTP, could it beat? No. How much time, energy, resource, bandwidth do you expect the company to put towards this? And was it a full paid version? I think that's very meaningful. Was it full paid? Because if it wasn't, eh, I don't think you got a leg to stand on. I mean, if we're going to look really close into it, there's definitely a lot of things that we need to look into. But one thing I definitely want to point out is this is a programmer giving a programmer crap. And I'm not sure if you know tech geeks, but we love to rip each other apart in the worst ways possible. The most disagreeable, horrific people that I've ever met were people who are fixing my computers, selling me computers, or programming computers. These guys, they, <laughs> some, they get into some really nasty arguments. I can't find the information on it at this particular moment, but there was a game that part two was advertised heavily in comic books and the programmer was having a dispute with his wife and the, uh, the wife was so angry at him that she destroyed his computer and the backups, just destroyed it. She'd later go on to apologize for it, but um, it is what it is. Here we go. Donkey Kong 2, Revenge of the Apes, developed by Chris... Auburth. 1980s. Here we go. The legend. Oberth was uh, romantically involved with someone. Heated argument. Girlfriend destroyed and erase all the discs containing the whole game. She got the backup that was in the closet too, I heard. That's so interesting how there's almost nothing at all on it. Hell hath not the wrath of a woman scorned for Sega.